Okay, let's talk about the crunch flow. So this short video is supposed to be a uh, um, orientation for crunch flow. Um, I introduced in the lesson, in the orientation lesson, that there are a lot of other um, reactive transport codes. Like uh, besides crunch flow, you have tough react, p fraud chain, freak C, Joe Camp's workbench, um, different. Reactive transport has a bit of different flavors, um, but they all kind of solve the same similar um, the, the, the mass conservation equations for different species. Um, so the, the 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 backbone of different reactive transport code are the same, but they have different solvers. They could have different uh, computational speed because of use of different solvers. Or also using different solvers, they could have different um, convergence capabilities. So the way it's numerical solved, they could be very different, and that directly determine how fast things are going to run in your system. Um, I choose to teach crunch flow for several reasons, among um, all these other reactive transport codes. Um, mostly because I think it's very flexible in terms of setting up Implify. At the beginning, the learning curve might be a little bit. Um, you might think it's a bit sharp because of the. Um, it's not a um, GUI uh, interface. It's not uh, graphic, and you might not used to text file and opening up this executable. But once you get used to it, and this allow you a lot of flexibility to run things and put in things that are much faster than a lot of other. Um, um, uh, reactive transfer code does, and also I uh, it uses advanced solver like this Petsy package, which has a lot of fast solvers. Um, this Petsy package is developed in uh, um, one of the national lab, I believe it's Argon, if I remember correctly. So um, it it run fast. And it tend to be robust. Um, it usually don't get into non-convergence problem unless your system is ill-conditioned, uh, Ill or there's a bit of somewhere there's a bug there. But then um, it also ha is very flexible in terms of setting up heterogeneous system. Like if you have different uh, low permeable zone, high permeable zone, some mineral in somewhere um, that it. Is more abundant and in other locations are less abundant. You can actually explicitly set that up in crunch flow, which I think it's a it's a biggest uh, advantage for crunch flow. So, um, in in order to be able to run crunch flow, you need uh, actually um, so f in this class, um, I put um, all the different executables on. The course website. There's also the menu file. There's a folder on of crunch flow exercise, which has a lot of different files there. Um, that Carl Stifo, when he taught crunch flow short courses, um, before he tend to run these executable file, uh, use these exercise files. So these you can see these exercise as in addition to what we teach here. And if at the end we'll be running a um, if you are running your, your 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 project, you will be um, kind of looking for things that you can use, and so the exercise could be a, a very nice complementary in terms of like, adding additional examples and in template input file for you to use. Okay, so I think when you do um, when you in these classes when you try to learn crunch flow, um, you should use a menu. Uh, frequently, like you can search for these keywords and look at the explanation. You don't have to read everything at the beginning because I think that doesn't. If you do that, the information doesn't register as much because you haven't got much of a handle on and on, on understanding the code yet. So I always advertise learn it when you use it. I think that's where you the information register the best. So what I have here is a folder that have four files. Um, so exe executable crunch tube 64 bit for the Windows system I have. There's a DLL file, there's the input file, and DBS file. So these four files are the 
necessary file for you in order to run um, the crunch flow in a folder. You can actually set up execute in, in the system to make it um, run default without copying to different folder. But for now, let's just keep it simple and you keep it in this folder. So we have this example, this, which is newest family as a crunch for example. It actually, it's reason it's called now, it's called a crunch tool because it actually incorporates isotope geochemistry. So the code should be able to run isotope um, formulation and everything. Um, this DLL file is a library file. The thing it happens, how uh, the code does is when it solving the equations, it actually um, calls some dynamic library. So this library file is necessary in order to for the for the code to finish. Um, and then you have the input file uh, and the database file. So we are going to introduce these two files a bit, um, just to um, so introduce the structure of it. Um, I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but just give you kind of a sense of what's going on, and then. In, in the later lessons, all, 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 most of the keywords will be introduced. Um, and you, you, you learn by working on exercise and examples. So the input file is mostly um, divided into keyword blocks. For example, here you have title block, which you can have in a name and introduce what is this input file about. It's, it's a good record keeping. Every keyword block. Um, typically, try to differentiate keyword block name and keywords. So you run, use the capital to for, to indicate the keyword block names. So it's it's uh, um, it's it's easier to see. And each keyword block should end with the end, like what we have here. Um, so typically, um, this is for for flow and transfer in one D system. So there's multiple keywords block here. There's runtime. So there's output, discretization, and all that. Um, today, I'm, I probably will just introduce the runtime mostly. Um, a lot of these keywords are not really. Um, it's it's related to a numerical uh, solution process. You typically I don't change. I don't suggest changing early on because you might um, whatever default that you use it. One thing that's sometimes useful is, is this is specifies a solver, just the name of the solver. So there are several different solvers if you look up in the menu. There are several different solvers you potentially can change one to the other if you have, for example, non convergence problem at some point. Um, so the PC, PC level, they're all explained in Crunchyroll. So typically, what I do it, I tend to kind of uh, open the menu when I learn it. Um, I tend to learn, look at all that, and try to learn what it means why I'm using that. For example, PC level, PC, PC level. So it explains the menu explain what it means, and everything. So you can dig into that and uh, do things. Um, and one thing that is important to keep in mind is. For in order to put in comments, for example, there's line you want to put in, uh, explain what that number is from and what it means and what are the units and everything. You can use command line starting with this exclamation mark. Um, you cannot do exclamation mark in the middle of line, for example, like doing this. This the code is not going to recognize. So you always need to start a new line. We're starting with the um, exclamation mark to to do comments. So this so the code will be kind of actually read that as a text, not as a keyword. One thing it's important to keep in mind is is your database file, the name of database file, need to be exact the same as the 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 um, as the name of the database file in the same folder. For example, here we have data.com.dbs, you should put that there. If you put another name there and, and then you don't have um, this that database in this folder, then it's not going to run. Or if you have um, multiple databases in the same folder, you need to specify which one you are going to use. 
these are the different um, ways of solving those so screen output is the the number of steps that you will skip before the screen actually have an output. If it's one, it's putting out every time step. If it's ten, it's putting up every ten time steps. And then there's there's, a, there's output keyword blocks. You can put in time units like minutes, seconds, hours, etc. This is the time you can put several times you want to see the snapshot of the system. And the last one is how long the system is going to run to. So this is this in this system is going to run to two hundred fifty minutes. Time series is where you want to have, for example, uh, in a particular grid block, you want to have a time series from time beginning to end of simulation. You want to see how the concentration, for example, in that grid block evolve over time. So that's the name of the output file that is going to have that information. And this specifies which grid block you want to have that time series. You can do multiple time series with different names and different grid blocks. And this is this time series interval determine how fast, uh, how many, like every one, so every time step so the, the code is going to write on the breakthrough curve. If you want to be output every time, every 10 times step, that's fine too, then you make the, the simulation as uh, a file, breakthrough file, a bit smaller because you have less output. Anyway, so these are output. I'm not going to introduce everything else in the system because we will be introduced in detail all the keyword block in one of the lessons on one D uh, physical processes with advection, uh, diffusion, dispersion process. So I'm going to leave these to there um, for the uh, introduction of the of the um, these blocks. So all we teach is this is more or less kind of get familiar with the keywords for each different process and what do you need to do in order to uh, setting up this meaning for it and making sense. Now before we close, let's talk about the database. So this is a data com. Um, this is a long file and has all the says it's, it's borrowed from EQ3 database essentially. It started with a line called temperature points. So these are different, there are eight different temperature points. Um, if you want to understand what are the, the details, for example, there's eight different temperature points. These are for different degree Celsius. Um, so there's log cave later when we talk about it the reaction, different reactions. There are eight different K values corresponding to the eight different temperatures, which is already um, done in the EQ3.6. So if you are specifying for gonna temperature is 150, the code is going to read the log K value for the different reactions from the fifth number, not from the default 25 degree Celsius. That's what it for. All right, so um, that's a temperature point. These are the dubai Hako coefficients because the code you dubai Hako summation, um, a dubai Hako equation to calculate activity coefficients. And then starting after the dubai Hako um, block, you have from starting from water to should be end by at the end of primary. Let's see. So the end so from up until here, it's a list of primary species. And each primary species have three parameters there. The first one is the Dubai Hako um, parameters that you can use for that species. This is charge, and this is molecular weight for for all the different um, primary species. So you can actually add in your own primary species if you either artificial makeup and elements or something. So sometimes you need to manipulate code to do something that you want. You 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 there should be a presence in the primary species because the primacy is essentially the building block of the system. So after primary species, you would have starting from the line following the end end of primary, you will 
you will start to have the second species. So all these second species are written, for example, like this. Let's see. Let's look at uh, uh, HS. So for the relevant primary species for the sub five species is is a sulfate. It didn't in this um in this database you actually can put in another sulfide if you want. Um but here is it's actually the primary species here is sulfate, so there's no sulfides there. You can do the sulfide species when you give it another name. So it's you can specify the sulfide species as written in term of redox reaction with oxygen. So a sulfide become reduced um, to become sulfide, or HS plus O2 gas to become sulfate, being oxidized. Um, let's look at another maybe bicarbonate or something. So for carbon, let's look at carbonate. For carbonate species, what do you specify in the in the system is the CO two? There should be a CO2, let's see, let's search for. Oh yeah, there's a bicarbonate there. So the bicarbonate is a primary species. Um, and then everything else, for example, the CO2 AQ or bicarbonate should be written as as, bi uh, as bicarbonate, right? So here, when it's so let's look at this line specifically. This is this is essentially writing um CO three my carbon species. It involved two different species. One is hydrogen ion, the other is bicarbonate. So if you write it will be CO three minus minus plus. When it's a minus mean it's in left hand side of equation. Plus H plus equals to bicarbonate, right? So the the the, the primary speed need to be in the right in the right hand side. And what are these? So these are should be the equilibrium constant. These are the not the right equilibrium constant. Um, it's the equi equilibrium constant for following the way the 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 the, the reaction is written. So it's saying bicarbonate species. Um, can be by chemistry if you write that way it will be 9.6 log k is, is this a log k value right so this is not 10.03 which means it's at a different temperature and it's using the same Value, so it's not corresponding to the temperature. So if you want to to look at the temperature effect, every every reaction you, you when later on when you're writing, you will need to specify. For if you are actually running high temperature, you you want to look up these numbers to make sure this number in database is correct, just to confirm. That's that's my. Uh, um, sometimes these databases are changed by people, and so you want to make sure these numbers are right because these are very important numbers. If we look at CO2 AQ, it's essentially saying CO2 AQ plus water equals to H plus and and bicarbonate. So there's three species involved. And for this reaction, you have the log K equal to at zero is minus six point five eight, and at high temperature it keep on decreasing. Right. So this this is a this set of number making sense. Um, but you still want to check every number you use, and you end up using in, in the in the uh, modeling process. You want to check these numbers. So it's three point zero. This again is a Debye Huckel. So this three number is essentially like the same three number as you see in primary species. You see Debye Huckel parameters, charge, 
and the molecular weight. So that's a list of second prime. So it should be, and as I do control F, I will see end of secondary. So it will say end of second, then it's this is toward the end of a second species list. Everything is written in second species, is written in term primary species. And then you, you see a block of everything with the G process. G means the gas phase. So all the gas phase are listed here. And then there should be end of gases. Is the end of gases. And then after that, after gases, you would have all these are mineral phases. So you can see the um, different reaction, different, uh, let's search for calcite. OK, calcite. So again, you have, so for the calcite, you have molecular weight. The so reaction written into two species. This is a stoichiometric coefficient, right? One calcium and one carbonate. And again, you have these are the uh, log k. Again, here the, the value are not necessarily right because you have um, all the same. But I believe this number should be the log k equals at uh, 25 degrees Celsius. For the um, by for the mineral phase, you only have molecular weight. You don't have the bihaco and um, charge because these are not in the water aqueous phase. So then this should be, so each mineral is written this way. So if you go to end of minerals, it ends at the end of mineral phase. Um, and then it will begin the surface complexation session. We specify the, the way surface complexation is written as well as um, like as this, again, it's a this is a reaction, and then it's a log k value in different conditions. Every time you see all the five hundred point zero zero zero, these are numbers that are kind of dummy numbers that you put in because you don't know what number to use. So this number means um, if you are looking for them. So that this in here we know that at twenty five degree Celsius. Log k for this reaction is 8.82, but for all other temperatures, we don't know. So if you need to use at these at other temperature, you need to look it up in the literature. And then this ending end of surface complexation. Now the other thing is uh, I want to point out is there's uh, also surface complexation at the end. There's uh, beginning surface complexation parameters that give you the charges of the different surface species. So these are the actual surface charges of the surface um, reactions directly related to surface complexation. OK. OK, so this is, this is surface complexation. Then you have aqueous kinetic block and then mineral kinetic block. Um, again, I, I always suggest that you will be looking up literature for real numbers. For example, let's say here you are specify. Let's look at calcite again as an example. So, for example, for calcite here is specified several different um, in several different blocks for different rate laws. For example, calcite. So they, everyone has a label. In this block, the label default, and you are actually looking at this reaction and with dependence on H plus. Depends, it's here it didn't specify dependence, so it should be. Um, there's no dependence here. Like here, it will be um, dependence on activity H plus raised to 1.0. And it, 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 is this is rate constants activation energy, the type of rate law it use, and all that. And for the other one, for this one, you're saying it depends on CO2AQ to the 1.0, and you, the, um, for the calcite dissolution reaction. So some, 
figure them somewhere else. You also have write pyrite, oxidation reaction, and you have all these. So you can also in the amplify put the rate constant like this. So if you put the amplify the rate constant, then it's going to it's it's going to ignore what you have in the database and use the one in the input file. Anyway, so that's for the mineral kinetics. And you can if 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 the mineral that you are interested in is not already there, you can add another block specifying all these numbers. And as long as you specify, for example, the minerals um, is part of the mineral um, list. If you add, if you have a new list that is not a new mineral that is not in the list of mineral, you can add that in in the mineral list, which specifies the reactions, locate values for that mineral, and then you add another mineral block for the kinetics here. Okay, so that's for the mineral kinetics. And then you would have the exchange block, which specify, um, you can specify multiple side ion exchange or a single side ion exchange. These are specified essentially, again, the reactions um, for the half of ion exchange reaction and uh, the exchange coefficient. So after this, so at the end, you have this. After this, the later parts, you have some numbers or whatever there. These tend to be um, things, for example, you want to move around a little bit. You can just temporarily store there. So you can more or less ignore this line if you want. I could, I could just did, um, remove all that. OK. So um, let's let's do a, a just a, a, a run. So what you do is you when you try to run control, you click on that execute file, and then you will be putting the name. It will ask for the name of the input file transport. One d dot in. You always have your input file in dot in, so that the code can recognize this is the input file. OK, now after this, you see a lot more file. Because with all these, so there are a lot of, so you should look at the extension. All these output file are the output. So because I specify in special profile one time, so it will be output at that one time for all the different velocity, for the total concentration, which is, uh, we'll be talking about that later, total concentration, speciation, pressure, gas, um, concentration, and there's also an isotope file. So in any case, and also a, a breakthrough code because I want this, but the outlet um, time series. So you will see a lot of these output file. If you have a, if you change your input file at this point to, a, let's say it's some, change some of the number and rerun again here, the new output file will be replace the old um, output file. So if you want to keep a record of both, you need to have another folder to run the simulation in order to, to make it um, uh, be able to kind of compatible, to, to, to still have the record of each. Otherwise, it's going to be overwritten. And if we look at, let's look at uh, transport 1D out, it's essentially kind of echo what has been reading. It's essentially going through. Uh, the file to see the input file and kind of keep a record of what has been read. And then it says, at the end, it says, OK, I'm going to stop uh, starting um, initialization, initialization completed, starting time stepping. So sometime, if the code has stopped running in the middle or something, you can look at this file to see if everything has been written in correctly. If not, that means there's something wrong in your input file. Another thing to keep in mind is in your input file, you're not supposed to use tab. You always use space to if you want to kind of have things lay out nicely and everything. You always use don't use tab. Um, the the code doesn't recognize tab. And then uh, let's look at the breakthrough. Okay. 
So here, what we specify as a species bromine. So this is essentially for that great cell, which is at, at the outlet. You have time, you have bromide concentration. This is. Um, So early on, it runs very, uh, because I put uh, one or something for time interval, so it runs every time service. So early on, it's like starting from 10 to minus 10 minutes. It's, it's essentially initial condition. You don't have any bromide. And then in the input file, in the inlet, you you inject input files uh, as a bromide country. So you start to have high and high concentration at some point um, later. So the, the, the inlet contagion is this. So at, at somewhere, for example, um, around maybe 100 min, uh, minutes or something, you start to have something come out, and then eventually you have st you, the contagion stabilized to the end. So this is a system um, of just transport. And these should be the log Concentration. This is concentration bromine and log country. So this, so this runs. Um, and if you need to end this concentration, total concentration for this non-reactive species is not really important. So I'm going to stop here, and hopefully you have a bit of a sense of what's going on. Several things that you should remember is you always need the executable file, database, input file and the library file to run the simulation. And uh, your ma the control menu will be your, your uh, good friend in this class, besides the reading materials that you, you will learn about the general principles. Um, I'm going to stop here. So from lesson one, we'll introduce for individual processes what are the important keywords and parameters, and we go through exercises and then run some simulations. Uh, do do homework to kind of um, um, re-emphasize what you have learned in class. All right, that's what we have for 